So anyway, today's show, we decided to talk about Alkmaar. Now, Rachel, I know you've never been there. Nope, this is new to me. You'll be teaching me. Yeah, but it's one of those things where it's just a really cool spot. It's got a lot of history, but it's also got a lot of other interesting stories to go with it, too. And I've experienced my own personal paranormal experiences. Ian, you've also been. I have as well. And yeah, have you done any investigations at Alkmaar? Not an official one. Um, okay. I've only <laughs> I've only ever actually been there once. Oh, okay. And it was for one of those um, what they call the doors open. Right. Okay. Um, yes, that's that's held here in Hamilton every open. now and again, and mm-hmm. you get to go into these buildings that normally you're not allowed to to access. So Great. it's a pretty cool uh, weekend when they when they do this. And uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, it was um, Akmar on the list. So mm-hmm. I wow. went. Wow. Yeah, it's the, the one and only time I've ever been in there. Oh, okay. And of course, because it's a public weekend event, mm-hmm. you know, there was no way we could start doing a, a paranormal investigation. But uh, we'll get into that. Ian, what drew you, what drew you to go there? Like, is it well, something you'd heard history. about the paranormal community where, you know, people have, other people have done. Uh, investigations there and you thought you'd give it a try yourself or no um when you'll understand why why there's been no investigations there um as we as we progress here today but uh no what drew me there was just the history um living here in hamilton i've known of this building my entire life but i've never been able to gain access except for this one weekend so Mm -hmm. it was really the history that that brought me into it um, gotcha. Of course, having heard some of the ghost stories that go along with it, mm-hmm. but, uh, but no, mainly it was it was a historical visit. Okay, so Seeker, have you been there? Um, yes, you, you did a paranormal investigation. I've been there a couple of times. Now, I've never been there for a formal investigation. I okay. Took the first time um, I went to Akmar was during one of the doors open, and this is going back to I think about 2012. Mm-hmm. So that was the first time. Um, and you said it's in uh, Hamilton, Canada? Yes. That's where it is. Okay. Yes. And I used to live in downtown Hamilton near the lake, uh, near near the old north end. And uh, we used to go up the mountain quite a bit. And we'd pass by the property. And you can't really miss it when you're, when you're passing by. Um, mm-hmm. Because it has some very unique features. Uh, <laughs> addition. <laughs> And unfortunately, I can't share my screen or I'd share some really cool pictures of Ockmar, but I'll put those up on the uh, Half Penny Dreadfuls and More Facebook group. And yes. I'll look at them as well. But yeah, where do we want to start with this? Um, Ian, do we, I guess we should just go through the history. Yeah, let's start with the history and then we can we can progress into uh, into the haunted topics. Right. So so I'll give a very condensed history on the house because it actually has a very you know, quite elaborate history, right? Mm-hmm. But initially, the property itself was um, purchased by someone by the name of Isaac Buchanan. And Isaac Buchanan came from Scotland. He was from Glasgow. And he immigrated to Canada in about 1830, I believe it was. But he set up a business in Toronto. And his father was a very well-known merchant. And so he sort of took over the same ropes and, uh, you know, sort of proceeded to be quite successful. And he ended up going into politics like many did in those times when they came to Canada. And it's sort of purported to say that um, people like John A. Macdonald and Alan McNabb and even Pope John Paul II visited Akmar once it was built. But he put the property up in 1854 and it looked different than it does today. And I have this really cool painting, old painting of Ockmar from the late 1800s. And unfortunately, today, when you look at the house, it looks a little bit, well, it looks very destitute, (laughs) as it's been empty. Yeah, oh, it is. But at the same time, it's missing a lot of its original features. So when you look at the front of the house, um, what people perceive as the front of the house, it's actually the back of the house. Oh, Um, 
when you come into the drive today, that actually pulls up to the back of the property. The front of the house faced 80 acres and oh, it wow. onto 80 acres of land. And it was beautiful with trees. And he did um, eventually do some planting, a little bit of uh, farming. Now, obviously, he himself didn't. He hired people to do that for him. But there was a gatehouse which sits on Fennel Avenue today. And it's just a tiny little home that when I was living in Hamilton, somebody lived in the home. Um, apparently now it's boarded up. It's so sad Ooh. because it's such a cute little little gatehouse. And yes. yeah, so it's still, it's on Fennel and still there. Have you been by it at all, Ian? Um, you're talking about the gatekeeper's cottage? Yeah, the gate, yeah. The, it, okay, yes. that's not on Fennel. That's right on the edge of the escarpment. That's on the edge of the mountain brow, yeah. No, I'm talking yeah. about Claremont Lodge. Oh, okay. Which is yeah. another, which was the other property. Yeah, the little gatehouse itself, I think someone is still living in. But uh, no, it's it's, it's abandoned, but it's actually sitting on private property now. Okay. Which is another big issue that they're the yeah. uh, and nobody's Lockmar people today are are trying to deal with. Right. But no one's that, living in uh, it currently, right? I think the no. wind boarded up, which is so unfortunate because when I was in Hamilton, um, I moved from there five years ago. Um, if somebody was still living in the home at the time. So, but very small little gatehouse. So kind of what you would picture, you know, a little um, Gothic style, white stucco with the green, green roof, green shutters, very, very quaint, very sort of UK style in its, in its look. And so the whole house itself was built in that, that sort of Gothic idea. It was um, sort of, the idea of calling it Offmar because originally it had been called something else. And I think it was Claremont Estate, some such thing. And then Buchanan changed it to Ockmar because they had an estate on Loch Lomond. In 1945, the, uh, a, a group of nuns known as the Hungarian Sisters of Social Service purchased the property for $32,500. And... Mm -hmm. 1949, the city of Hamilton bought a large portion of Ockmar um, from King George VI for $1. Ooh. So as a result, Ockmar estate, oh, wow. what's that? A pound. Well, it would have been a pound, but we were, it was in the 1949 Canada. So it was literally $1. Um, Gosh. Yeah. As a result, the Ockmar estate is now comprised of only nine acres compared to its original, which was 190. Mm -hmm. So in 1997, Alexandra Langs and Jane O'Finn, yes, members of the Hamilton Garden Club requested a meeting with Diane Dent, who was the chair of the Municipal Heritage Committee in the city, um, in order to help preserve Ockmar. And in 1998, the club presented Brenda Yates with a letter from the city that requested Ockmar to be preserved. So even today, we're still in the throes of nobody knows what to do with this property. It, yeah. Um, it has gone through all kinds of things. Now, when the sisters were there, they added some very unusual architectural features to the property. Ian, am I correct? Oh, oh my God. They built this god-awful retro 1960s... Oh, 1940s. Uh, chapel oh, yeah. on, yeah. The, on the back of the house. Yeah. Uh, it's a separate building, but they, mm -hmm. they built this god-awful thing on the back of the house. It's octagonal. It's, oh, it, it's, it's oh, ugly. No, it's, it's a really a ugly yeah. building. <laughs> it's weird. It's a round building, but on top of that, there's very austere two-story block residences where they were staying, right? So when the sisters would come, but this property, apparently it was a huge retreat as well for the, the religious sisters. So they had everybody from school kids to um, priests to married moms, to all of these people coming and doing these religious retreats at this location. So when you go on the property, and I don't know, you know, obviously some people may feel very different, but for me, I just find it wigs me out. The, mm -hmm. the weird juxtaposition of this beautiful old Gothic style manor, and then this very weird 1950s block residential, you know, almost like 
hospital wing looking. And then this strange round chapel is in the middle of it. And it, it's just bizarre. And I mean, it's, it has a very strange feel to it. The original dovecote is still on the property, the original coach house, which the sisters, oh, wow. yeah, and the sisters changed that into living quarters as well, because they did not have enough room initially in the beginning. And so the, the property has undergone many different odd <laughs> things. That's different personalities, yeah. Originally, Ian, I don't know if you knew this, but you know when you pull up to the back there and you walk into the back and you've got the, the house itself has what appears to be almost two wings that protrude out with that long mm -hmm. flat wall. Mm -hmm. That yep. used to be a glassed in veranda and it was on the front and the back of the property. Mm -hmm. So that even in the cold in the winter time, when it was sunny, you could go outside and sit in this beautiful glass in veranda and the original painting shows the veranda still being there with all of its windows so almost like um like a conservatory right mm -hmm. where we would sit inside a conservatory yep. and it was on the front side and the back side of the house so it looked very different than it does today although the main bones of the house are still there but so let's talk wow. about our experiences at the house because Rachel hasn't had the opportunity to be there and you know she can look at the pictures and you can see um, the in interior I mean it's a fantastically architecturally beautiful home it's got these gothic hallway that you you know when you come in there's this big long and it's in the shape yeah. of a cross yeah so, so when you yeah, come the in, house it um, when you go in there it it you have the, the main floor and the second floor. And um, yes, as Sika says, it's this great big long hallway mm -hmm. on both floors. And then you have all the rooms off to the sides. Yeah. And architecturally, it's really beautiful. You've got these, these, these arched ceilings and the windows are arched and the doorways are arched, uh, made out of all of this beautiful antique wood. Mm -hmm. um, just unfortunately, you go in there now and overlooking the, the architecture, um, just the place is falling apart. Um, out. And a number of years ago, they auctioned off all the beautiful chandeliers and all oh, no. inside. Um, some stuff had gone missing. And apparently, oh, my goodness. one of the original chandeliers in a garage. So... It, not a garage on the property either. Like when I was there for doors open, uh, the second time I went, which was probably around the same time you were there, Ian, um, the last time it was open, um, somebody was telling me the story that they, it was either their grandfather's garage or somebody's garage and they had discovered one of the original little chandeliers that used to oh be my God. on the property. Um, so I know that over the years, bits and pieces have gone missing. Um, yeah, it is, it is. And it's weird because for a while too, I believe it was the Catholic school board that was going to purchase it and use it for their oh. offices. And then there was um, mention of turning it into a museum. I mean, Hamilton has a lot of historic home museums already. Um, although I think we should buy it as, as, and set up our new paranormal uh, base. There. <laughs> <Should> we... <laughs> I'm getting that the city isn't going to let it go for less than about probably twenty or thirty million. So. Gosh. I don't have much, unfortunately. <laughs> I won't be able to get a small business loan for that, but one can try. No. But I some friends of Ockmar, they've been for many years yes. trying to, trying to um, That's heartbreaking to me, you know, hearing them taking pieces away, from the original pieces from the property is yeah. really heartbreaking to me. You know, it's a shame. But, but the thing is that over the years, I mean, when it became the military facility, like for the, the, the guys from the Air Force, the convalescent hospital and um you know place it really took on an eerie strange like that that's that no. it really feels weird when you walk into areas that still mm -hmm. have this medical feel to it it's very austere mm -hmm. 